Now, in high definition, coverage you can count on. This is WTVM News Leader 9. Good evening. Thanks so much for joining us tonight for News Leader 9 at 11. I'm Barbara Goche. Jason has the night off. Topping our news tonight, police say a fast food customer thought it was his lucky day when he grabbed an envelope with over $500 cash inside. But police tracked him down with the help of a security camera, and now they're telling him to give the money back. News Leader 9's Dante Renzulli brings us our top story tonight. Dante? Thank you, Barbara. Yes, we uh, reported a similar story last week where a man was accused of picking up a wallet from the ground and not making enough effort to find its owner. But police say that this situation is even worse because they say that this man went for the money after watching a senior citizen leave it behind. Police say the man in this video could not avoid his temptation to take advantage of another customer while waiting for food at the counter of Sharp's Fish and Chicken on Winton Road. According to investigators, a woman pulled cash out of her envelope to pay for her meal, but then forgot to put it back in her purse. The white envelope blended into a background of white menus, which made it easy to lose track of. When she left the restaurant without her money, police say this man was faced with a decision, and he made the wrong one. You can see him looking back and forth and taking one last moment to think about it before he hides the envelope in his bag of food. 73 year old Alma Moses says she stopped in the Sharks a few weeks ago right after making a withdrawal from the bank. And that money were to pay my bills for the month of June. After filing the police report, she made copies of it to prove she wasn't lying about losing the money. And I took them to everybody that I owe and they understand. Police say the man wasn't thinking about the camera directly above the register. And thanks to viewers like you, a detective was able to get in contact with him after people watching the news recognized his face. Police say they know where to find him, and the man agreed to turn himself into authorities on Thursday to avoid the embarrassment of being publicly arrested. The detective says the man understood that he did something wrong and he admitted to it right away. Uh, the man in that video told police that there was less cash in the envelope than the woman is claiming. But because he's on camera watching the woman leave, and in the detective's opinion, deliberately not telling her that she left some behind, police say that his credibility is not very high right now. Barbara? All right, Dante, thank you. Well, Cobb County police say they have information that a father who left his toddler in a hot SUV for hours knew his son was in the car. That's according to reports by the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. 33-year-old Justin Harris is charged with felony murder and child endangerment after his son died after spending more than seven hours inside that hot SUV. Today, police wouldn't give details on their investigation, but they say the case is evolving and it is far from over. Meanwhile, the funeral for the toddler will be at 1 o'clock on Saturday afternoon at the University Church of Christ in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Once again this afternoon, some areas dealt with some very heavy rain, including maybe even some uh, flooding in spots. But down to our south, this is, was the uh, place that had the most rain. Places like Barber County on into parts of uh, Clay and Quitman counties in Georgia. You see the showers moving through there throughout the course of the afternoon. But really, most spots on the northern half of the viewing area staying dry today, or at least relatively dry. Had some rain in Columbus, but not really a big deal. Temperatures in the 70s right now, thanks to the cloud cover and some of the showers out there. It's 72 in Albany and Dothan. 73 in Columbus and 71 in Auburn, and we shouldn't see a lot of changes as we go through the nighttime hours tonight as far as temperatures are concerned. 71 when we wake up tomorrow under that mostly cloudy sky. Hey, don't forget about the WTVM Fan Club. If you have a new or gently used fan, you can donate it to the Gills Auto Sales locations across the valley, and they'll get those over to the Valley Rescue Mission, which will help distribute those fans to folks that are having a tough time staying cool during these hot summer months. So we'll talk more about your forecast for the rest of the week coming up here in just a bit, too. Barbara. All right, Derek, thank you. We have an update tonight on a story we brought you last month about a man from West Point who went missing just over a year ago. We've obtained video of James Garner leaving the Chambers County Jail in 2013, which is believed to be one of the last times he was seen. News at 09's Annie Hubble joins us live now from our East Alabama newsroom to explain why the Garner family is asking for the community, community's help this weekend. Annie. Well, good evening, Barbara. It is a family's worst nightmare having to report a loved one missing and having to live with so many questions for over a year. Now, the family of James Garner is hoping their community will come together Saturday to help them find their son. The video you see here is a 41 year old James Garner of West Point being released from the Chambers County Jail on May 3rd, 2013. He was released on a public intoxication charge after spending two days behind bars and he hasn't been heard from since. Be naive to think that a person just disappears in thin air. 
especially when they have a history of coming home, uh, especially when they don't have a driver's license, when they, they're not able to drive. Both Alabama and Georgia agencies performed a massive search effort for Garner after he was reported missing last year. For the Garner family is organizing another search this weekend and is asking for help from the community. People know him and love him, and they've been asking what can they do to help. So we've been asking for any volunteer that would like to join us Saturday morning, you know, and going up and doing another door-to-door -door search and asking questions in the community. Garner's family believes the video shows James who looked disheveled and unable to carry himself correctly as he leaves the jail. He was believed to be heading to Lynette and his alleged unwell condition at the time could strike someone's memory of seeing him walking that one day in May last year. Over at the video school, we'll um, check the sympathy of somebody that knows anything because it's apparent that anybody that looks at the video can tell that he's very distraught. The Garner family needs answers, and even though they may not end up with what they want to hear, they are looking for closure. At this point, I think all law enforcement, everybody is working to find out what happened and to find his body. Because we, at this point, we do not think he's alive. And it's sad to say, uh, and, but and that's the reality we're dealing with. And the sanctity of his memory uh, requires that his body's located and that the truth comes out. Now the search party will meet at the Chambers County Courthouse in Lafette at 8 o'clock Central Time Saturday morning. If of course, if you recognize or know the whereabouts of James Gardner, please give your local authorities a call. Reporting live in the East Alabama newsroom, Annie Hubble, WTVM News Leader 9. All right, Annie, thank you. In a meeting tonight, Columbus City Council sets a date to vote on a proposed overlay, which could change the rules for real estate in the Midland area. The new plan would control the way buildings along Manchester Expressway look to passing motorists. The proposed area goes from J.R. Allen to the Harris County line. Those who are for the overlay want to beautify the area near the road and eliminate billboards. Some property owners, though, say the changes are too expensive. Tonight, the council decided they will take a vote on the matter at their next meeting, which will be on July 8th at 9 a.m. Well, many Alabama officials have been watching the Supreme Court closely in recent days as it refused to lift an injunction on a Wisconsin abortion law. Raycom's Max Reese explains how this ruling relates to Alabama's new abortion law. At the left-leaning ACLU, the group that sued to block Alabama's admitting privileges law, attorneys there viewed the Supreme Court ruling as a victory. Well, we thought it was really great, and it's going to be uh, interesting to see how it comes out in the uh, Seventh Circuit in Wisconsin, and we hope that will bode well for us in the Eleventh Circuit here. The high court decided to keep in place an injunction that prevents Wisconsin's law from going into effect. Like Alabama, officials there had to defend the law in federal court. Attorneys for the state that have defended this state's law didn't have much of a reaction since the ruling had nothing to do with the merits of the law and just whether it should remain blocked while the case is being considered. The ACLU is looking to get the law struck down in any court across the U.S. I really do expect to see it pop up in other states, so it would be really great to have a good strong win. The federal judge in Alabama's case is expected to make his final ruling by the end of July. In Montgomery, Max Reese for the Raycom News Network. Well, workers for the Georgia Division of Family and Children's Services will be putting in overtime. All new at 11 tonight, investigators ordered them to work at least eight hours of weekly overtime until backlog child protective services investigations have been eliminated. Authorities say 3,000 investigations are overdue. The investigations are supposed to be completed within 45 days. Governor Nathan Deal authorized funding for an additional 500 caseworkers over the next three years. Well, ladies, listen up. A new study says 3D mammograms may be better at finding cancer than regular scans, but whether that means saving more lives isn't known. The study involved almost half a million breast scans. Researchers found the 3D scans detected one additional cancer per 1,000 scans compared with conventional mammograms. There were also 15% fewer false alarms. Coming up here on the news at 11, U.S. military advisors are in Iraq as militant fighters take over key areas of the country. We'll have the latest details on the violence in the country. Plus, we showed you this dramatic video of a Florida store clerk being attacked last week. Well, tonight, 
Hear what the pregnant victim is saying about the attack. You're watching News Leader 9 with Barbara Goche, Jason Dennis, meteorologist Derek Kincaid, and Dave Platt with sports. Welcome back. The Iraqi city of Baiji is the latest battleground between security forces and the militant group ISIS. In this developing story, Iraqi authorities insist they are holding on to a key oil refinery there. Meantime, 90 United States military advisors are in the region to assist Iraq with information to counter the threat from ISIS. But the U.S. maintains this is Iraq's fight and the nation must alter its political landscape to bring real peace to Iraq. I think that anybody who's been looking at this situation that w would acknowledge that the circumstances on the ground have changed. And the necessary steps that are required by the Iraqi political leadership have not been taken to confront those changes. The 90 U.S. military advisors joined 40 other troops who were already in Iraq working at the embassy in Baghdad. All are now focused on advising Iraqi leaders on the fight against ISIS. Well, a pregnant Florida woman is talking about what she's calling the scariest moment of her life, being attacked during a robbery at her job, and it was all caught on camera. It was Jessica Smith in this video. She's the pregnant clerk on the receiving end of a vicious attack and robbery at the Boost Mobile store in Pensacola. One week later, she still has a black eye, but Smith says she is not interested in being a victim. You know, I came to and I see this guy standing above me, and he's kind of bowed up. And I'm on the ground, you know. In my mind, I thought he was going to kill me. Like, that was it. He was going to finish me off. And I just could not let that happen. Like, that was not the way I was going to go out at all, or my baby. Hmm. Well, within hours of the robbery, the video was online. And in less than 24 hours, police arrested the suspect. And turn now to our weather. Some uh, rain around. Uh, I know in the Columbus area tonight, Derek, but not near as bad as what we saw last night, right? Yeah, that's right. It didn't amount to very much. In fact, the airport not recording any measurable rain out there today, though other parts of the city got wet. Our high today out of the 90s for the first time in a while, 88 at the uh, airport as well. We're going to talk more about what to expect for the rest of the week and a look at your upcoming weekend coming up for you right after the commercial break. Weather coverage you can count on from Storm Team 9 and the area's only live Doppler 9. Well, most spots this afternoon out of the 90s for the first time in a while, thanks to the cloud cover that we had through most of the day. 88 in Columbus, 82 in Auburn, 89 in LaGrange. The warm spots, Eufaula and Alexander City, uh, both checking in with 91. Right now, we've got 70s on the map, 78 up in LaGrange, Thomas in 77. Those were two cities that really didn't see anything in the way of rain today. Uh, the northern half of the viewing area staying mainly dry, but for everybody else that had at least some shower activity, we're looking at mainly low 70s right now, and I don't think those numbers will change that much as we take you through the overnight hours tonight. As we look back at the rain that fell out there today, here's a look at those rainfall totals and you see most of the northern part of the viewing area dries. We talked about the southern half getting very wet today. Parts of you fall have seen some stormy weather. In fact, we'll take you a little closer into Barber County and show you a few of those rainfall totals. Some spots not really a lot, kind of like Columbus yesterday had a few places at a fourth of an inch, uh, a quarter of an inch in some spots, but then you just don't travel very far before you find some of those two inch plus rainfall totals. That's just how it goes around here in the summertime. So Barber County seeing the similar weather to Muskogee County yesterday. Uh, let's show you what's happening right now, though. The radar network fairly quiet out there. Most of the showers well down to our south and east, really just some light rain from Americas down to Albany. Really nothing more than a few sprinkles. That's about it. But you saw the stormy weather today, at least earlier this afternoon, traveling through some of our southern counties and just not left with a lot else out there at this moment. I think as we go into the nighttime hours tonight, most spots stay dry, but as we head into tomorrow, Thursday and Friday, more of the same about that 40 to 50% coverage of rain. We know it's going to rain over the next couple of days. It's just the coverage, the placement of those showers and storms that we'll have to figure out on a day to day basis. Very subtle changes determine where that rain will pop up. Hey, don't forget to give us a follow over on Instagram too for more weather info and weather pictures. We'd love to see yours too, so make sure you follow us over there. WTVM underscore weather where you can find us there. Tonight's forecast now to 71 for a low temperature. Uh, again, we're not going to see temperatures change that much tonight as we head into the 
afternoon hours tomorrow. If we see the rain holding off to later in the day, I think we'll make the low 90s again in Auburn and Opelika. Very similar weather story there down in the upper 60s for lows tonight and highs tomorrow afternoon over in East Alabama, creeping back up there to the upper 80s. But again, if we see the showers and storms popping up early in the day, we might not make it to the uh, upper 80s. It's going to be one of those things we'll have to wait and see. And then as we head into the weekend, we'll forecast some drier weather and because of that, some warmer temperatures back in the mid 90s for Saturday and Sunday, Barbara. Yes, yeah, 96 in there. That's dangerously close to 100. Rising back <laughs> up there again. All right, Derek, thank you very much. Coming up here on News Leader 9, a young girl recovering after receiving a lung transplant in a battle which made national headlines. Find out how her fight helped change the rules. Plus, a pair of dance partners head to a national competition. You won't believe how a heart brought this pair together. Stay with us. Well, the National Transplant Board has adopted a new rule which gives a limited group of young lung transplant candidates better access to donor lungs. A national debate began last year after the parents of 10-year-old Sarah Mernigan asked that her di their dying daughter be added to the adult transplant list. They granted a temporary exception to the rule and Sarah eventually got a transplant. Well, yesterday, the group's board made that change permanent. Today, Sarah is doing well and her parents are pleased with the ruling. She's really excited that potentially she's helped other children and made a difference for them. Yes, it's try hard because you shouldn't give up when it's possible. Well, Sarah's lungs were deteriorating because of cystic fibrosis. All new at 11 tonight, dance partners from Wisconsin preparing for an upcoming performance have a unique story to tell. They were brought together by a special bond. Max Eagle takes us to rehearsal in Pewaukee, where a heart transplant recipient and the donor's mother practice their moves. Five, six, here we go. Us it's lesson time for Jack Eigel and Janet Ramsey. They're working on the tango to get ready for a national competition next month. You know, I think we've been doing really good and I'm feeling pretty comfortable now with the tango. We're going into that with a very open mind of, you know, we'll just do the best we can and just it'll just be fun. Boom, boom, boom. You're that fun will be part of the Transplant Games of America. Eigel is a heart recipient. Janet's late son, Chris, donated the heart. I can still feel Chris. <laughs> 12 News first shared their story back in 2010 when Eigel and Ramsey met. Oh. Ramsey listened to her son's heart, now beating in the man she's dancing with. I think we make good dance partners. We do, we do pretty good. We can uh, fumble over our feet and laugh at each other. Eigel and Ramsey first started dancing together late last year. They've since performed for the Wisconsin Kidney Foundation and have another performance this Friday. Then it's off to Houston to show off these moves. Walk, now you do your open fan. For Eigel, dancing like this is something he never dreamed of. As a younger person, I, I took some dance classes and things, but never ballroom, and I, I pretty well thought that was behind me. But. Here we are. Ramsey says being by Eigel's side with her son's heart means so much. The first year, I could never imagine five years out that I would even be happy again. And I am happy, and I'm very glad that I know Jack, and I'm very glad that we're dancing and having fun. And keep those heads up. Well, Igel got his new heart in 2009. Since then, he and Ramsey have traveled to previous transplant games in the past for swimming. This will be the first time ballroom dancing will be included in the transplant games. Well, coming up, it's a day for highly recruited prep stars to pick colleges. Dave has all the details. Can Vanderbilt make it for SEC College World One, Series two, champs in seven years? The action from Omaha is just ahead. And he has highlights from the World Cup you can really sink your teeth into. Sports coming up next. Now from Sports Leader 9, Dave Platt. This is the seventh straight year that an SEC team is playing for the College World Series title. Tonight, Vandy with a chance to make it four SEC championships in that stretch as the Commodores look to finish off Virginia. Hey, uh, some LSU fans making the trip to Omaha in the name of Conference Unity? You never know. Anyway, the Commodores taking the lead in the fourth inning. John Norwood sending it to the gap in left center field for a double. Xander Wheel comes in to score. It is 2-1 Vandy. But Virginia busting loose in the sixth. The fielder's choice ties the game. Then a ground out to second brings in Derek Fisher with the go-ahead run to make it 3-2 Cavaliers. Then 
Brandon down, add to the lead. Down, smoke it at the center. Norwood can't quite flag it down. Kenny Downs comes in to score on the triple to make it 4-2. They added two more in the seventh. They lead it 6-2, the game in the ninth. Looks like there's going to be a deciding game three tomorrow night. To the big leagues, the Braves opening up their series in Houston tonight. The Uptons putting on a shell. Third inning, B.J. Upton ripping it to left. A solo homer to give the Braves a 2-1 lead. And then in the fourth inning, little brother gets into the act. Justin Upton going yard to left center. Four time the, Bra the brothers have homered in the same game. Braves go on to win it. 3-2, your final score. All right, let's talk football. The Troy Trojans hitting Columbus on the preseason Trojan Tour. Uh, head football coach Larry Blakeney had plenty of coaching company tonight. Men's basketball coach Phil Cunningham, women's hoops coach Chanda Rigby, and baseball's Bobby Pierce all along for the trip. Trojans getting geared up for the upcoming season in an upgraded football stadium. Uh, they're looking to get back to form after a 6-6 six and six year that saw them miss a bowl game for the fourth straight season. It's back to basics for Blakeney. We hit a little sinking spell after 2010, and uh, you know, whatever you blame it on, you blame it on something, hopefully, and you try to recover. And uh, we've gone three and nine, five and seven, and six and six, and uh, sort of feel like we're back in, you know, in, back in uh, the mode to get back to championship caliber, and that's what we're hunting. Uh, by the way, the Trojans have an early season opponent from the SEC. They'll take on the Georgia Bulldogs September 20th in Athens. It was a good day for Auburn football recruiting. This morning, Southside Gaz and offensive lineman Tyler Lynn committed to the Tigers. This evening in Montgomery, they added St. James tight end Jalen Harris to that list of commitments. It was a, a great, a great, great weight lifted off my shoulders. You know, I just kind of knew for a while now that Auburn was home to me. And, you know, ever since my first visit to Auburn, I just felt like, you know, it was a place for me. Harris makes it 17 commitments for the Tigers 2015 signing class. A real mess in today's World Cup match between Italy and Uruguay. 79th minute, Uruguay's Luis Suarez tangling with Giorgio Cellini. Cellini, rather, they go to the turf. Cellini's furious. Here's why. The replay shows Suarez bit the Italian defender on the shoulder. Uh, the referee didn't see it. Suarez has been suspended twice in his career for biting opposing players. That's some nasty stuff. We'll see if FIFA disciplines him. Oh, by the way, two minutes later, Uruguay breaking the scoreless tie off the corner kick. Diego Goodin heading it home, and that there is the ball game. Uruguay advancing with a 1-0 win over Italy, eliminating the Azzurri. Uh, Costa Rica and England have scoreless ties, so that means Costa Rica wins Group D. In Group C, Colombia. Runs the table. They beat Japan 4-1 to go 3-0. Uh, Greece joining them and moving on to the round of 16 with their 2-1 win over Ivory Coast. That's a look at sports. All righty. Thanks, Dave. Derek has the final check of your forecast when we come back. Well, a cute play date at the San Diego Zoo this week with a cheetah cub and a puppy. Take a look. This seven-week-old cheetah cub is named Ruxa and the puppy, a Rhodesian Ridgeback named Reina, is eight weeks old. The cheetah is an animal ambassador for the zoo safari park after his mother rejected him. Ambassador, ambassador cheetahs are paired with a domestic dog for companionship. The idea is that the dog will help calm the cheetah. Yeah, good luck on that. I'll say for now. <laughs> well, they're still little and babies, yeah, but I don't know much. about later on. Yeah. But they're very cute right now. Right now. Got to love it. <laughs> Let's enjoy it right now. Yeah, we'll enjoy it right now. <laughs> All right, like our weather, we're enjoying it right now, but yeah. we know it's go only going to get hotter as we get closer to the weekend. Huh? It will, yeah. Temperatures going up as we head into your Saturday and Sunday. Really, for the next few days, we're going to expect similar weather to what we had out there today and yesterday. The showers and storms in the afternoon and evening, upper 80s, low 90s for highs. All right. Oh, I got to ch check some math. Troy's missed a bowl game the last three years, not the last four. Uh, the, the, that may be back this year. All right, let's hope so. Yeah. That's going to do it for us tonight. We should wake up news tonight more. Morning at 5 a.m. There's the cute little cheetah for you. We'll see you tomorrow night. Have a good one, everybody.